Hi all, my name is Mess Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part 5 of the Dual Resonant Solid State Tesla Coil Show Controller Build. In this episode we are going to mount the Synthoraptor 7 inch touch display back into the 19 inch rack panel here. And that is of course this nice little touch panel. And when we have that mounted back into the panel we will also take the output panel and we'll get both of these panels mounted back into the 19 inch rack suitcase. So let's get building. The last time I flashed the Synthoraptor was back in the start of this year. So let's take a look at the changes that has been done to the firmware since then. Now I used the version 4.1 beta 6 and if we just quickly scroll up here we can see that a lot of work has been done with new envelopes, ADSR features and also whole new features like sys commands through MIDI, more bug fixes and also he extended the firmware to cover larger display versions like the 7 inch that I use myself. So that is just great. So let's get all the way back up to a the latest release version 4.2 beta 3. Let's just get back here getting started and then we have of course the firmware and firmware flashing and what we need to pay attention here is the flashing order and recovery because flashing the next-gen display uh, we do that through a USB pass-through mode through the Tiva microcontroller and the Tiva microcontroller can always be firmware flashed whereas access to the next-gen uh, is impossible if we some kind, uh, some kind of failure happens uh, while flashing the Tiva first. So we have to do the next-gen first and then the Tiva microcontroller. As I mentioned in the last video, I had to get the next-gen project file from the author of the Synthoraptor in order to change it to the 7-inch screen. But now, as I showed in the change log, he supplies the TFT file for this. So, let's just get that opened. I have the TFT file download program here, connected to COM3. It shows a higher baud rate, as, that, as, as I remember that was supported by the 7-inch version. And I have the NX8048P070 underscore 11. So let's take that. And let's see what happens if we download that. Start scanning. Tries to connect at some different speeds. No device found. Okay, so... We will have to explore a bit about this next-gen pass-through mode. Ah, so we have to get in through the settings. So let's do that. Settings, next-gen USB mode. And now we can try again. And it will, of course... It's a little bit funny that it tries to connect uh, with different baud rates that I have actually said I want to use. Yeah, there we have it. So it's flashing now. So let's just have a bit of beer while we wait. That's always a good way to spend your time flashing firmware. Actually, a pretty, pretty good beer. This is uh, called Tubo Raw. It's a uh, biodynamic beer and Brewed after some of the same principles as you find in the German beer purity law, which, if you're interested in beer, you really should check out. That's a, I think it's a law for some 15, year 1500 that says you can only use four ingredients when brewing beer. So uh, if you say you brew your beer after the German beer purity law, yeah, you are almost certain that th that product does not consist of anything else. So download has finished. And as we can see here, it did reboot, but did not connect back into the Tiva. So we'll just try to reset the Tiva here. And we can see it will boot up. So now that the next-gen display is flashed, we can flash the Tiva microcontroller next. And just to make sure that we are actually connected through the LM flash, because there is no um, other than the USB connection and then choosing your development board. 
uh, on the program tab you can press the hardware reset and we can see the synthropter rebooting so we are connected to the right board and let's just select the proper bin file here and we would like the six coil version and yeah just uh, using the standard settings here so let's just press program and that goes pretty fast, no time for beer this time, what a shame. Save return to main, that the return label has been replaced by a save button. So that actually saves the settings to the EEPROM. And that has to do with uh, the way the whole rewriting of the software has been done. So let's go check out the um, schematics for connecting the six coils, as we want to do that next. Outputs have been mounted. We have the synthoraptor lying here, up and running in simple mode. Oscilloscope connected to channel 1 and 2. So let's just test it out. Now we're at 430 kilohertz. And let's just try to ramp that up to 100 microseconds. And we can check, maybe you cannot see this, but 440 hertz and 100 microseconds. So it is spot on to what we see on the screen. And then that really nice ramp down. So it works. So let's get that mounted in the panel. And now for a moment that I have waited for for so long, which is mounting the first three finished panels and now i do say three because one of them is just a blind and we have the output panel as well and then at the bottom i would like to mount just a yeah blind bar to give me some to armrest on and also just to give some space and airflow uh, i was at least thinking about airflow but if you open up that open frame 19 inch rack yeah well what use is that anyway so let's just find the itty bitty small box here. So now, as you can see, I'm out of disk space. Where does this even go? Just like that. The first blind that I want to mount is, yeah, this one, which would go down here at the bottom. Now, I just looked through all things I yeah, took out of I think these came from uh, base station amplifiers, so some good reuse. Always nice to reuse good materials. So I have also considered that I might want some kind of protective lid over the uh, touch display. And that is just to avoid any, not uh, that somebody uses it that's not supposed to, but more just to protect the display itself. Uh, it's really satisfying to put these in the rack, finally. So, am I happy about how that turned out? Hell yeah! So, let's get some power on this. So far, we have spent most of the time looking at the documentation and getting starting part of the documentation on the GitHub repository. But uh, if you go back one step uh, backwards to the whole introduction to the synthoraptor, there is a point called PC MIDI setup, which is not covered in the wiki as of now. If we go down here, Max he suggests to use SynthFund 1, which is a free program that can output directly to a serial port. Now I tried that and just to show you, you have to select your COM port at this button here. It's not really documented in the documentation for SynthFund, so that's good to know. But I ran into problems that the COM port key, uh, keeps getting locked up each time I have played a MIDI file and I will have to close the program and open it again. So I'm not going to use my time on that. So instead I tried the hell is MIDI to serial and loop MIDI program, which is a virtual MIDI port. And then you yeah, can route it through the hell is MIDI to a serial port. 
and those two programs we have here. So it simply takes a virtual MIDI port over here in loop MIDI. You choose that as your MIDI in and you choose it to your Stellaris virtual serial port COM3 out to the synthra Raptor. So let's try to play some MIDI. Another vital point is that you have to do your coil setup for the MIDI live mode on your synthra Raptor. So if we take a look at the synthra Raptor envelopes, we get back to a yeah, the built-in envelopes, which have a very important point regarding programs, that you select these envelopes by the instrument. So program zero, that responds or that corresponds to choosing the acoustic grand piano in your MIDI software. And if you do not get this straight, you would have all kinds of yeah, weird envelopes. So if you're just trying to play your first MIDI and just trying to get it sound right, be sure that you have chosen the right instruments. And we can see here in the MIDI editor that you, yeah, in this MIDI editor program called, that you click your instrument here, you choose the first one, acoustic grand piano, accept, that's it. Now on the synthropter, you have to choose, hold down the bottom for each panel here, and you can run through the settings for each Tesla coil, which channels they're supposed to play. Now there are additional settings for the NRP editor and all kind of very advanced stuff that I will have to look in, um, in on in another video. So for now we have just set up the MIDI channels, we return to the li MIDI live mode and let's just say we want to play at 80 microseconds, yeah around 4% note duty and let's play a file. And you can probably see the LEDs up here. Get some more on time. And if you can recognize this, this is uh, the README MIDI from Doom 1 or Doom 2. Not entirely sure actually. But we can see we are playing uh, three string ensembles on channel 4, 5 and 6. And we are playing the main tune on channel 1. And here we get the second instrument. It's awesome. Now we have all three instruments. So that was a really quick rundown of how to set up your Synthoraptor for playing six channels with a MIDI, putting out six channels, each assigned to each their coil, and that the yeah, show controller box here is just working very nice. The software setup is easy, so get going, build your own, and have fun with that. Thank you for watching part five of the Dual Resonance Solid State Tesla Coil Show Controller build. And as you can see, we are only about halfway done. But I would however say that the last remaining panels, that is maybe just one third of the work, I think. But that is of course uh, subject to change if I get some better ideas on the way or run into problems. But until then, I will have to spend some more time reading up on the sysx commands that can be sent through the MIDI file to program the synthropter, which will be extremely important and also convenient when you have to push out coil settings along with the MIDI file. So you can actually save MIDI files according to the setup that you are playing at. 
very convenient. So I'm really looking forward to get to know that interrupter much more. So Max really did a fantastic job here and I signed up at GitHub in order to add some more information to the vegan as I discovered a few things which I think can help others building this. So until next time, see ya.